Hello, my name is Ben Ernest and my research partner is Ava Chow. Today, we are presenting the results of our effort to predict exoplanet existence from the Kepler telescope data. The Kepler telescope collected data from space for over nine and a half years. It observed over 500,000 stars and confirmed the existence of over 2,600 exoplanets. The Kepler mission generated 600 gigabytes of scientific data which has led to some key scientific findings. This includes the discovery that planets outnumber stars, small planets are common, planets are very diverse in size and makeup, and solar systems are also very diverse. The amount of scientific data collected provides tremendous opportunities for data scientists to explore and build predictive models. Our objective is to use this data to classify whether a space object is a candidate for being an exoplanet. This effort is a secondary data analysis. Our data set is a combination of previous Kaggle data set with updates from the Kepler mission as provided by Caltech Labs. Features of the data set include various observation identifiers, as well as variables that indicate characteristics of the potential exoplanet. For example, radius, temperature, and orbital period. This data set was updated one month ago and is a collection of observations from NASA and Caltech. There are a total of 49 variables and 9,564 observations. Our target variable is binary and identifies whether an observation is a candidate or a false positive. The target variable is close to evenly distributed. This bar graph of the target variable visually confirms our observation about the distribution. This also suggests we have a balanced data set. We also looked at how the KOI score variable is distributed both for our target variable and for each value of the target variable. This will help us understand the relationship between KOI score and the target variable. This histogram shows the distribution for all KOI scores scaled to support a better visual understanding of the distribution. We then looked at to understand how the KOI score is distributed for the target outcomes. The violin plots show this for the candidate and false positive outcomes. It's clear that KOI scores close to one tend to be classified as candidates, while close to zero tend to be classified as false positive. Since we are trying to develop a model that predicts if something is a planet based on observed data, we will remove this from our training and test data to avoid biasing the model. We also checked for and found 820 observations with missing values. Considering our options to deal with the missing data, we first wanted to remove the columns that were completely devoid of all input data. These variables would obviously not provide any value. We then want to know how many observations include missing data there are 820 out of the entire data set, or about 8.5%. Looking at the labels associated with the observations with missing data, we found they heavily favored false positive results. We took this to suggest the missing values were more likely to result in false positives or cause false positives, and that they were biasing the data. We now removed these observations from the data set and checked to see if there was still relative balance in the outcomes, which was confirmed. The data was split using the train test split method from the sklearn library in Python. We chose an 80-20 split for the training and test data. The test observations will be set aside to support model testing and validation. The split was validated by checking the distribution of the target variable after the split. The bar graphs show that the test and training data sets are still well balanced and representative of the overall data. Data pre-processing, like centering and scaling, will be done after the data is split to avoid data leakage. Since our target variable is categorical and binary, this is a classification problem. We'll focus on linear and nonlinear models that predict the label for each observation. Each model will first be fit on the training data and then validated using the test data set. For the linear models, we will consider the perceptron, logistic regression, support vector machine, and stochastic gradient descent. For the nonlinear models, we will consider the k-nearest neighbors, decision trees, and random forest. Each model will be tuned using cross-validation to vary the hyperparameters and find the optimal model. The first linear model we fitted was the perceptron. Before fitting, we needed to change the target variable to a numeric value. For perceptron, it works best if they are non-zero val values, so we used negative one and one. The only hyperparameter we optimized was the maximum number of iterations. Using the best params method in sklearn, we found five to be the optimum value for the maximum number of iterations. This gave us the best accuracy. We then fitted the model with the optimal parameter and validated it on the test data set. 
The produ this produced the resulting confusion matrix and an accuracy of 0.718. The next linear model we considered was logistic regression. Before fitting, we had to remove any predictors that have a near zero variance, remove any highly correlated predictors, and center and scale the data. We followed the same model optimization approach as before and found the best hyperparameters to be C equal to 1000 and the fit intercept equal to true. Here's the confusion matrix for the optimal model, which is an accuracy of 0.818. Next, we fit a support vector machine model. First, we centered and scaled the data. Then we optimized the hyperparameters and got C equal to 1000 and gamma equal to 0 0.001, and then the best kernel to be the RBF. After fitting the optimal model, we had an accuracy of 0 0.851 along with the associated confusion matrix. The last linear model was built using sto the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. This time, we only needed to scale the predicted predictor data. We then found the optimal hyperparameters to be a loss function equal to hinge, alpha equal to 0 0.001, the learning rate set to optimal, and the maximum number of iterations equal to 100. This resulted in an accuracy of 0.833 with the associated confusion matrix. Let's move on to nonlinear models. The first of the nonlinear models is k-nearest neighbors. Within the k-nearest neighbors algorithm, hyperparameter tuning can be done in order to adjust for the distance metric as well as the k number of neighbors. We'll begin with evaluating our k-nearest neighbors model using Euclidean distance. In order to determine the optimal k-neighbors, we performed a search within a range of 1 to 15 nearest neighbors to observe accuracy performance. Using the elbow method, we determined that a k-value of 7 would provide the best outcome for our Euclidean distance k-nearest neighbor model. This resulted in our k-nearest neighbor model using Euclidean distance having an accuracy of 0 0.782. For our second k-nearest neighbor model, we evaluated a model using cosine similarity. As with the k-nearest neighbor model using Euclidean distance, we needed to find an optimal k-value. To do this, k-values between 1 and 15 were evaluated in order to determine the optimal k-value. As with Euclidean distance, the elbow method was used and it was determined that a k-value of 7 would provide the best outcome. This resulted in our k's nearest neighbor model using cosine similarity having an accuracy of 0 0.786. So far, cosine similarity slightly outperforms Euclidean distance in terms of accuracy. For our final k-nearest neighbors model, we evaluated a model using Manhattan distance. You guessed it, we once again need to find the optimal k-value for this model. K-values between 1 and 15 were once again evaluated in order to determine the best k-value. The best k-value was determined to be 7 using the elbow method. Our test accuracy with our k-nearest neighbors model using Manhattan distance was 0 0.795. Of our k-nearest neighbors model, the model using Manhattan distance is the best performing in terms of accuracy. Moving on to decision trees, we decided to evaluate three decision trees with various hyperparameter tuning. Our first decision tree model had no specified tuned parameters. This resulted in our default decision tree model with an accuracy of 0 0.801. Moving on to our second decision tree model, we chose to tune this tree using the max depth parameter. Max depth is a parameter that controls the size of the decision tree. More specifically, max depth controls the depth of the tree. As the tree grows in depth, it results in more splits that capture more information about our data set at the risk of overfitting. To select the optimal max depth, we chose to evaluate max depth between a range of 1 and 15. At a max depth of 6, we saw a peak in accuracy before ultimately dropping. Therefore, a max depth of 6 was chosen for this model. Our decision tree tuned over max depth resulted in an accuracy of 0 0.831. Our final decision tree was tuned over CCP alpha. CCP, CCP alpha is a parameter that controls the size of the tree by pruning the form tree. This is done by gradually pruning the weakest link, or the nodes with the smallest effective alphas. As CCP alpha gets larger, the more pruned our tree becomes. Using a search and evaluating accuracy over various CCP alpha values, we decided to evaluate our final tree with a CCP alpha value of 0 0.000135. This resulted in our final decision tree with an accuracy of 0 0.803. Of the three decision trees, the tree that was tuned using max depth was the best performing in terms of accuracy. Our final nonlinear model was random forest, utilizing principal component analysis. Prior to model implementation, we made sure to normalize the data. We then performed principal component analysis and transformed our predictor value variables. This was then fed into a random forest model with no further hyperparameter tuning. This has resulted in our best performing nonlinear model with an accuracy of 0 0.846.
Of all the models evaluated, the best performance was obtained from a linear model. More specifically, our final model was a support vector machine model with an accuracy of 0 0.851. Why should we care about obtaining a model that can determine exoplanet candidacy with around 85% accuracy? Currently, there are over 5,000 confirmed exoplanets, with more potential exoplanets being discovered constantly. As we continue to classify exoplanets and learn about their unique characteristics, we increase our knowledge of other planetary systems. More importantly, we increase our knowledge and redefine what we know of our own system. Let us take, for instance, the interesting state of Pluto. What was once classified as a planet has now been demoted to a dwarf planet with the discovery of fellow dwarf planet Eris. By discovering and classifying new exoplanets, we gain more insight into our own understanding of our own solar system, and by accurately confirming the exoplanet status of an observation, we may assist astronomers in verifying the methods used to find these exoplanets. Here are a list of our references, and thank you for listening to our presentation.